former president of Nigeria, good luck, Jonathan, yesterday delivered a lecture at Texas, U.S. on why remaining invisible with Nigeria than joining forces with Biafrans in splitting the country will pay Niger Delta more. I begin this write-up by saying that I mean no hail thought towards the Biafran struggle or Igbos in general. What I have written here are mainly my personal reflections concerning the Niger Delta, especially with regards to non igbos groups and their stake in the Biafran movement, which has been rebated for some time now. I am not a mouthpiece for the Niger Delta, but I believe I have been in Niger Delta long enough to know our problems and our stand. I have also interacted with many Niger Deltans to know their stand in the Biafran struggle. When I use the term Niger Delta, I am referring to the regions covering Delta, Edo, Bayesa River, Akwaibo, and Cross River states. However, I understand that the region also covers Edo, Imo, and Abia states. I am not concerned with the latter because they are either Igbos nor Yorubas and have their own struggles. The ethnic groups within my coverage include Urobo, Isoko, Bini, Eson, Itsikiri, Ijo, Epie, Obia, Ogoni, Afimia, Efik, Anang, Ekt, Ori, Ibibio, Ogoja, Ejagham, and other groups in Cross River. North, Ikwere, Ukwani, Ika, Anochia, Ogba, and other Iboid groups are not included. Historically, Biafra covered all the Niger Delta states except Delta and Edo states. Only Delta and Ondo states are exempted. This fact must be emphasized. Pro Biafrans are welcome to debate and address many issues in a civil manner. I understand that most pro Biafrans resort to insults when salient issues are addressed. Please let's set a good precedent from Heron. 1. Biafra must not be better for Niger Delta because Niger Delta may end up leaving one form of subjugation for another. The argument Igbos have made for their freedom is the desire to be free from outside Yoruba domination. That argument also applies to the average Niger Delta. Igbo no doubt will be the major ethnic group if Biafra is actualized. Ijos may have a stake due to their numbers. What about Ogonis, Urobo Isokos, Itsekiris, Efix, ETC? Where do or where will they fit in at the national level? Where will we be able to put them? At the national level where would they fit in the sad reality is that another nigeria will just be made manifest and resentment will build up what will really be the fate of minorities will they fare better in biafra or alone in nigeria big groups such as ausas Yorubas and Igbo checkmate each other's excesses very well. When you take a good look at the Nigerians, you will see that the biggest groups are the Yorubas, Aosas, and the Igbos, 
and these people check meet each other's you know excesses very well who we check meet that of Igbos in the new nation then number two is where would the capital be located if we are to follow the notion of central location the capital of Biafra won't be Enugum but around Umaya Ikot Epene Axis will Igbos allow their capitals to be cited in a non Igbo location this is a very salient issue because you don't expect the river Rhine Niger Delta in Tuan Brass for instance to journey all the way to Enugu to see their president is that how to go about it it has to be a location where all Biafrans will assess easily Enugu won't go number three is the issue of vaccination comes to play for so long Biafrans have annexed Niger Delta as part of the proposed nation the map has shown us Biafrans have drawn to constitute a new nation if we judge from this map that has been drew it means all group in the Niger Delta have been annexed number four is what language will be made the official language of the new nation what language would they speak? Number five is what and what have Igbo nation done for Niger Delta to gain their trust? Every day I see Igbo youth making enemies where they were known. They constantly use the agencies of the internet to spread controversies. Whole insults as the center and make unfolded claims what do you make in this kind of situation number seven is still on the issue of leaders and the new leader going to fall from the skies or they are simply going to change addresses from abuja to enugu then the number eight is will biafra be a utopia the impression that Biafrans gave is that Biafra will be perfect and we'll all know that for a fact that this is not true apart from the issue of corruption and sentimentalism that have been addressed we still have the issues of development where will money be generated from to develop this nation the number nine is the current structure of the proposed nation as shown in the map earlier embedded favor Igbos with more states finally it should be noted that expect insults directly at my persons by e-warriors and keyboard mercenaries as usual but i won't pleasure such persons with answer or altercations if you raise good points we can discuss like intellectuals that is what good luck Ebele Jonathan the former president of Nigeria has said what is your thought and reaction to what he has said so far what is your point of view about this we have heard him earlier in the news that the former president of Nigeria yesterday delivered a lecture at Texas US on why remaining indivisible with Nigeria than joining forces with Biafra in splitting of the country that it will pay Niger Delta more. What do you make of what he has said? We would like you to drop your thoughts and comment on what has been said. We'd like to see your comments in the comment section. Thank you guys for listening. Do subscribe to this channel if you have not, and I'll see you on the other news. Bye for now.